Hey, what's up, what's up? Joe in Vegas back with another review. A big, 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 big review. You two at the Sphere. Um, living in Vegas, everybody here and anybody who's visited Vegas has been watching this unbelievable Sphere project come to life over the last year or so. You know, we saw the renderings, we saw all the diagrams and all the what it's supposed to look like. And you kind of, I don't know about everybody else. I kind of looked at it and said, there's no way it's going to be that fucking amazing. It's that, fu- it's that fucking amazing. That, that place, you know, watching it probably the last month or two, I think they turned it on maybe a month or two ago, just from the outside and just immediate, immediate change to the entire city. It is spectacular as they keep adding things to it, adding, uh, new designs graphics whatever you want to call them to the outside every time they change it it's like newsworthy stuff it has changed las vegas forever from the outside and i'm sure it will pop up in every city over the next five to ten years every major city this weekend we got to look on the inside this weekend u2 started their their famous now led uh, residency um no one knew what to expect no one knew you know, they kept saying the inside's cooler than the outside. Trust us. So this was our first chance to see it. Um, they started last night was opening night. I did not go, but I went tonight. It was opening weekend. Uh, Saturday night was the second night. Whew. There's so much to unpack. I just got home from the show. I'm a little drunk. I apologize if my words are slurring. I think I got this. Um, it, I'm still uh, processing this. There's, there's two things that came to my mind right off the gate. There is a very, very, very obvious trade-off because, you know, for me, as I got older, as I got more into concerts, as I got more successful and it could afford better tickets, it became important to me to be closer and closer to the stage, to have better and better seats so I can feel completely connected to the artist. When I used to sit up in the nosebleeds, you know, they're still great. You still hear the music, but the music, the sound is usually not as good. But more importantly, I always felt a little bit disconnected from the artist. So as I be, as I went on with my life and got older and whatever, I got closer and closer and realized, wow, the better the seats, the better the connection. This is the first time in, that I can think of ever where there's an absolute trade-off. The closer you want to be to the artist, in this case you too, you are not going to get the full experience of the sphere, of what's going on on the inside. Um, luckily I read some articles about it before I got my tickets. I got them in the pre-sale. I got them through YouTube's fan base. Um, I was originally, and this is really important. I was in, I bought tickets in the 100 section, the lower section, but I was in the back and they made a mistake when they first listed these tickets that they did not write obstructed view on the 100 level, like after the 12th row, because what happened is the second level overhang, it overhangs those last bunch of rows on the hundreds. The way that the sphere is shaped on the inside is you have the stage and then the screens go up and they wrap around you on the right and left. And then they go all the way up and all the way around you. So you are completely immersed. If you're in that hundred section below that overhang, you miss all the screens going up to the roof. Fans got really upset. I read about it. I called the sphere. I bitched. I complained. And they actually moved me to section 207 which was very nice of them um from what i read and what i experienced tonight the 200s are the best level to get the full on experience but like i said it's a trade-off that's the farthest i've sat from a band in a while maybe at allegiance stadium eh, it's probably now it's closer there it's very steep and you're, you're you're pretty far back from the band but it's so interesting because I've never experienced anything like it. The band, I, I don't want to say they're secondary, but you are so engulfed in what's going on around you that you're not even you're not even fixated on the stage like you are normally. It's a, it's a weird phenomenon. I've never experienced anything up, but it's 100% a trade-off. And, and you have to make the call. If you want to be more invested in the band than in the screens, then go get General Mission or go get the first couple rows in the 100 sections and you are cl- as close to you 2 or whoever is playing – But you're not, I don't feel that you're going to get the full screen experience. You have to be on 200, 300, and 400 to get that. But you will be far. Okay, that was was number one. The other thing that I I kept thinking about is 
how the fuck do we ever go back to normal concerts after this? I kept thinking this reminded me when I was uh, in high school and Smells Like Teen Spirit came out and it was a definite shift in music. It, it was it, I, I, That was the only time I've experienced. I think it's happened a handful of times in music, probably Chuck Berry and things like that or the Beatles. But this... I go, I've go. i gone to thousands and thousands of concerts over my life. Thousands, maybe even more than that. I consider myself a professional concert goer. I, I've put in the time, I've put in the hours, I've seen every band possible. I have never seen anything like this. Technology has caught up to live entertainment. This is the first seat of it, and it's incredible. It's fucking incredible. How the fuck do you go back from this? I don't know. I don't know what the financial part of it is. I I heard rumors that the you know the sphere is losing money. I don't know how expensive it is to make these graphics, but I'm telling you, this is a shift in live entertainment. This is the starting point. This is the first plant, seed planted. It's only going to get better as technology gets better and cheaper. That's usually what happens with technology. But I don't know how we go back to normal concert going after experiencing what I experienced tonight. Let me get through the set list because there's a lot to talk about. There's there's the band, how they did as a band, and then there's the graphics, and then it's I, it's so much. I, I, it's just so unique. It's so different than anything I've ever seen. So this whole thing is about Achtung, Achtung Baby, their album. Uh, I don't know what year it came out. I don't know. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna guess because I know I'll be wrong. Um, but they basically play the entire album. For me, I think that was a mistake. Even though it's an incredible album and it has a huge amount of hits on it, I don't know why they chose to. I know it's like the anniversary or something, but that's not. That's just an excuse to. I don't know why they did that. I, I just don't know why they didn't just do the great, greatest of you two have a greatest hits. I mean, because unfortunately, a lot of hits got left off, and there's plenty there. Most of this this show is hits, but I don't know. I think it would have been a better show if they just did. You know. Uh, let's revisit the the career of you two and do all the hits from all the albums. But let me start with this. So they started with uh, Zoo Nation intro. Then they did The Fly. Then they did Even Better Than The Real Thing, Mysterious Ways, One. And with they also sprinkled a lot of stuff throughout the show. A lot of Elvis references, some from a lot of Vegas references, a lot of references to the things that inspired them. And it was cool. And they stuck little snippets of songs in there. So in Mysterious Ways, they put Donna Summer's I Feel Love at the end of one. Or, or was it the beginning? I think it was the beginning of one. I don't remember, actually. They, they threw in uh, Elvis's Love Me Tender. Uh, then they did Until the End of the World. Um, they did some French uh, Edith. Hayef's non I don't even know what that is. Renette Rain. It's probably, I don't know. I don't know what that is. Uh, then they did Who's Gonna Ride Your Wild Horses. Trying to throw your arms around the world. I, I'm purposely not mentioning the graphics because that's its own conversation. I'm going to go back to that. Uh, trying to throw your arms around the world. Then they did an acoustic set. They did All I Want Is You. They did Desire. They did Angel of Harlem. They did Love Rescue Me. You know, Bono told little snippets in between that you know it's like just love rescue me reminded me he mentioned that, that they wrote that with bob dylan um one thing that i noticed and i loved it bono is usually incredibly political I, he was not political at all he didn't say anything about politics i thought i was going to hear about ukraine i thought i was going to hear about you know climate social justice all that he left it out I don't know why. I'm guessing it was hard for him to leave that out. But I think maybe we're just, it's so, what's the word? It's such a triggering thing, no matter what side you're on, that like we're at a point that maybe it's best just to not mention it. I'm surprised because I don't think he gives a fuck. But he kept politics out of this, which I was very surprised about. Anyway, so they did that acoustic set. Um, you know, Angel of Har- or Desire and Angel, I think that was on Rattle and Hum. Um, I love U2. I wouldn't say I'm the biggest U2 fan. I love them. I, I love their music, but I don't know. You know, I'm pretty sure that was Rattle and Hum, if I remember correctly. So the acoustic set was like a little off. They got off the Achtung Baby thing, did a couple acoustic hits. Then they went back to the album. It was So Cruel, Acrobat, Ultraviolet, and Love is Blindness. And then they threw Viva Las Vegas in there. This part of the set list I had a problem with. And I'm gonna talk, I'm going to come back and talk about it. The show ended on Love is Blindness, which was 
pretty good, damn it. I remember that. And then they came back and they did the encore. And then they, they mixed in some other stuff, some of their hits. They did Elevation. They did Atomic City, which is their new song about Vegas. They did Vertigo. And then they did Where the Streets Have No Name. They did With or Without You. They threw uh, Sinead O'Connor's uh, uh, Nothing Compares to You. And then they closed with Beautiful Day. And they threw uh, Louis Armstrong's What a Wonderful World in at the end. Okay. I'm fine with the set list. There was stuff they didn't sing. Sunday, Blundy Sunday. You know, uh, what else? Uh, Stuck in a Moment. Uh, I mean, there's there's stuff they didn't play that I love. I wish they would have. But I, I knew going in... I probably wasn't going to get all the hits because they were doing the album. And I'm okay with that. There's enough hits in there. I think it would have been a better show if they didn't. Because of that section with the So Cruel and Acrobat. And I know the diehards probably love that shit. But I feel Bono kind of lost the crowd there. And it's going to go back. It's part of the conversation with the graphics. So the way this works with the sphere that I learned tonight is... Oh, God, I don't even know how to describe it. I'll have video, obviously. You'll see it. It's so hard to talk about. These screens go all the way up to the top, and they wrap around you. Depending on the song, obviously, the graphics would change. He did everything from, you know, uh, the city of Las Vegas. He did, there was one, I don't want to, I don't uh, I guess I'm not ruining anything. There was one that, that was like little fly started to appear, and then the whole thing got black. Um, they had these amazing ones with these flags in the middle of the desert and the flags were, bl- were blowing fire or smoke to make up the flag. It was really fucking incredible, incredible stuff. They had one where, where Vegas, it was, had one that was Vegas uh, and then they deconstructed it and it, it started with the whole full strip and then it got deconstructed throughout the song where it was just the desert that was left. There was one, I think it was ultraviolet, where the whole thing was blue, this bright beautiful blue color it was incredible it was absolutely incredible there was even one time where they like broke that wall down meant or whatever the word is uh physically break it down they uh metaphorically broke that wall where they had a string a long string going all the way up that was attached to a digital balloon so the string was real it was like uh and and bono was holding it he was walking around the stage and as he walked the string that he was holding was going all the way up to the screen and the, it was attached to a digital balloon and the balloon was moving around. It was pretty, just the technology was off the charts. I, I don't know how else to say it. Bono himself, definitely getting older. He looks good. He sounds great. I thought he sounded great. I felt his energy was a little low compared to how I've seen him in the past. I don't know if it's just, it's a smaller stage. The stage was set up like a record player. Um, it's a smaller stage. So there's not a ton of room for him to run around and stuff. I don't know. He, I felt like he was a little bit, he definitely was the first half was sweating. You could see he was really dying. I don't know if it was his costumes. I don't know if it was just the Vegas heat or whatever it was, but he seemed to be struggling at the beginning, but he got his shit together. He's still Bono. He's an incredible, incredible, incredible front man. Uh, gray voice edge was incredible. It was these guys were incredible so that little pocket in the set list was so cruel acrobat ultraviolet it was somewhere around there coming in the middle of the acoustic set this was my probably my only complaint with the show i feel like they lost a crowd there not only in the fact that they weren't playing massive hits but they weren't utilizing the screen i was under the impression that every single song would have this unbelievable graphic going on in the background and there was a good four or five or six songs where they were barely using that screen. And because it was the time that it wasn't hits, I just felt like they lost the crowd. I don't know if it's because it's an older crowd. I don't know what it is, but I just felt they lost it. And I don't know why. Again, it's probably a money thing. It's probably so fucking expensive to do those things that they had to add a couple songs where there was no screen. But, you know, a lot of times they weren't doing anything crazy. They were just using it like a regular screen in a show, but it was so massive. So you're watching Bono on the stage, but there's this massive 100-foot Bono behind you. And I don't know. You'll see the video. It's very hard for me to explain. But that would be my only criticism was that part of the show. I just feel like they lost everybody. And I missed, uh, not everybody, but they lost the crowd. They had them going. They lost them. And then they brought them back. I think if they just switched to more of the hits, they would they would never lose that crowd. The whole show, 
They they were on late. They started late. Um, I think it was about two, two and a half hours. They played 22 songs. Let's see. 22 songs. Which, again, is a little, little short for a band that's been around that long. But, again, I think it's all financial. Anyway, what can I say about this show? I have never experienced anything like this this is a game changer i feel like i watched history being made there's no doubt about it i cannot wait to see what else this sphere offers i don't know how to rate this because it's you two and it's the technology and they're almost they're the same but they're kind of separate things as a show as a whole i'm probably going to give it a nine six something like that i think you two could have been a little bit better a little bit more energetic but whatever they were lacking there got made up with this technology and this graphics. Um, spend the money. This is something I, I don't know where else you're going to see something like this. The future is here. There's no doubt about it. Go see this show. It's really interesting. I know this review is getting long. Where are we? Yeah, we're 16 minutes. Pretty incredible stuff. I am. I don't want to say I'm speechless. I just don't know how to describe what I just saw. It was pretty freaking epic. It was pretty incredible. I've seen some big shows in the last few months, last this year alone. I, I've never seen anything like this. I, I, I would absolutely go again. The tickets are pricey. I don't know if they'll come down. As I think they're playing through December. Um, it's really cool stuff, man. Go check it out. Thanks for listening. I will see you at the next show. Bye-bye.